Welcome back everyone to part three of the marine mammals and sound lesson. And I hope that now that you've looked at the evidence, you will agree that pinnipeds show a number of characteristics that link them more closely to land mammals than cetaceans or sirenians. Let me give you some more information about pinnipeds and you might wanna to add to your notes and your list of evidence. So let me give you a quick overview and introduction to this interesting group of animals called pinnipeds. There are many more than just the sea lion and the harbor seal. In fact, there are more than 35 different species alive on Earth today. Their name is wing or fin-footed, and um, they all have a tiny little tail, and they mainly have, they, many of them have very large eyes, and vision is very important when they're uh, hunting for food underwater. They um, all shed their hair or fur, molt, like once a year, and they give birth on land. So they have to come out of the water to give birth to a single pup and to nurse their pup um, every year. Uh, and the whole group of pinnipeds has diversified all over the world. And you'll find them in all the, you know, in the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and they're, they're a very successful group. And they share a common ancestor with bears and otters so they do come from the carnivore group, but it was an animal that went into the ocean 20, 25 million years ago. And so when you say carnivores, that's a group of mammals that uh, eat meat. And so this is a group where, and, and the seals and sea lions are fish eaters. Um, and they have been evolving and adapting in the ocean environment for much longer than the sea otters for 25 million years. So let's go back to our animal hearing ranges. You might have noticed that the animals that had the closest overlap with human hearing were the sea otter, the California sea lion, and the harbor seal. Uh, and you can sort of think about that actually makes sense because these three animals and the, those two groups have to make sounds and hear both in air and in water. We've mentioned that they make sounds both in air and in water, and they use the same uh, vocal cords, larynx, that land mammals use to make sounds. Many species of seals do make lots of underwater sounds, and they use those to communicate. They make bell-like sounds, they make clicks and trills, and warbles and whistles. Harbor seals are thought to be one of the least vocal, but they do make this really interesting uh, sound that's a territorial display. Let me play it for you now. So it sounds almost like a roar um, and that's recorded underwater. Sea lions, as you may have heard them barking on land, well, they do the same thing underwater. So let me play you. That was recorded underwater. So sea lions are also quite capable of making those same uh, sounds underwater. When we look at the data from the hearing ranges for the land carnivores. So let's look at comparing the hearing range of sea otter, California sea lion, harbor seal with dog, fox, and cat, because those are the carnivores that we actually graphed and have data for in hearing range. And if you just take a minute and look at the top three, which are the marine mammals versus the bottom three, which are the land mammals, you can see that the most sensitive hearing range overlaps well. They do have the same basic hearing range as the land carnivores do. But overall, you can see that the land carnivores hear more in the lower frequencies. And the one that hears the most highest frequencies, if you look there on the graph, out of all those animals, it's the harbor seal, which in many ways is the most adapted to the marine environment. And harbor seals have, uh, they have some special adaptations to their ears to close the, the ear canal down. And they may be hearing a little differently than uh, the other, many of the other um, marine 
uh, pinnipeds. So very interesting. Okay, so now we've talked about sea otters and sea lions and harbor seals. That leaves two groups that we could think about and wonder which of those two is the most different from land mammals. So which, which one maybe in the fossil record has the longest evolutionary history or has evolved the most into the uh, ocean environment? And you made a prediction. So um, check back on your notebook and see what did you predict? Which one did you say was the most different from land mammals? Did you say a serinian, like a manatee or a dugong? Or did you say a cetacean, like harbor porpoise, bottlenose dolphin, pilot whale, beluga whale, northern right whale, blue whale? Well, guess what? Whichever one you said, you were right. Because serinians and cetaceans have about the same long fossil record. Completely different from, if they've evolved from two different groups of animals, but they both have the same very, very long fossil record and long time adapting into the environment. So some clues that looking at these two groups that tell you, oh, this is a really well adapted to an ocean lifestyle animal. They have those things we talked about, the large bodies, the special blubber, front flippers, the hind limbs have been reduced to just tiny little bones by the pelvis, and they now have a full on proper tail or flukes for swimming. Now the Serenians and elephants share a common ancestor. So 50 million years ago, from the lineage that uh, elephants evolved from, uh, an animal started going into the ocean in a place called the Tethy Sea in the ancient ocean. And Cyrenian is uh, the, for the Greek word that means siren or mermaid. And you can tell that they've um, really adapted to the ocean environment. Now they are herbivorous, as we probably talked about. So they eat seagrass and so they're vegetarians like elephants and they have some of the same really interesting adaptations like their hind molars are their complete teeth and they're just like elephants, their teeth are built for grinding down tough vegetation and throughout their life, their teeth move forward in their jaw and as teeth wear down and break off, new teeth erupt and move forward. And I think they have four sets. So they're like elephants that way. What do you notice when you look at the hearing ranges for manatees and dugongs? You can see that the manatees have a higher hearing range. They can hear a bit higher, but their most sensitive hearing range it overlaps with humans well. Let's add in elephants. And you can see that they also hear much higher frequency range than elephants. So let me play you a manatee vocalization from underwater. So very simple, but interesting sounds. And you can, um, we have all those files in a file folder for you. So you can go back and listen to the manatee and the dugong, as well as the harbor seal, the sea lion and the other cetaceans. When you have a chance, um, you could play those samples. So let's switch to cetaceans. And as I said, if you said, a dolphin or whale, you were just as right as if you said a manatee or a dugong because cetaceans also are from an ancestor. The fossil record shows us that an ancestor from uh, 50 million years ago first started going into the ocean, but they're evolved from a different ancestor that 
evolved. Um, on land, you have hippos and giraffes, the even-toed ungulates, basically, and hippos are the closest of the relatives to cetaceans. But cetaceans have been evolving and adapting in the ocean for 50 million years. And there's a really good fossil record of all of these really interesting ancient whales and whale-like animals that evolved over the last 50 million years. But on land, the same descendants from that ancestor were evolving into hippos, giraffes, deer, so the even-toed ungulates on land. And both cetaceans and sirenians have really changed dramatically over those 50 million years and have um, a whole lot of adaptations to living on land. Now, cetaceans are more successful if you measure the number of animals and the number of species than sirenians. So there are more than 80 species of cetaceans on earth today. And there were only four species of sirenians, three, of man three species of manatee and one species of dugong. Now, part of that is that <clears throat> sirenians are restricted because they eat sea grasses. They have to be in shallow, sunny water where those grasses can grow. And they mainly rely on vision to find and forage and eat their food. Whereas cetaceans have evolved into predators that feed on a huge variety of different marine animals from tiny little sh shrimp and krill uh, to fish and even some hunt down other marine mammals. And most cetaceans rely on sound, not only for social communication and to stay in touch with the, each other, but also uh, many of them use it to hunt down and capture or find their prey. And that means that they've developed a really sophisticated way of using sound. And that's one of the main adaptations uh, that they've made to the marine environment over tens of millions of years. And it probably is a big part of the really great success of cetaceans and why they have moved out and adapted into all the different uh, types of ocean environments. So let's look at cetacean hearing. And these are the groups where you see the really big split don't you? You can see if you look at their hearing ranges. And if you look at the two that have very low frequency hearing, those are the baleen whales. Those are the very large baleen whales, the blue whale and the northern right whale. And the cetaceans that make the very high frequency sounds are the pilot whale, the beluga whale, the bottlenose dolphin, and way up high, the harbor porpoise. And you can see that they have uh, much, much higher frequency uh, hearing range than humans do, the toothed whales, the adonises. But you can also see if you were, uh, if there's human noise in the marine environment, it doesn't matter whether you're making low frequency noise or high frequency noise, you're going to be disturbing at least some species of marine mammals because they have these well adapted hearing ranges in both directions high frequency and low frequency. So take a little bit of time in your groups and discuss what you noticed about this, the different hearing ranges and what that would mean for our challenge and what you think is gonna happen uh, with human noise. And just a quick review for you, just to remember that sea otters are carnivores, they're in the group of mammals known as carnivores, and they're the most recently evolved into the ocean, and their fossil record goes back two to three million years. Pinnipeds share an ancestor with carnivores like bears and otters, but they evolved back into the ocean 25 million years ago. Sirenians share an ancestor with elephants, and they have a fossil record going back 50 million years ago, and both the sirenians and the cetaceans, it seems like their ancestors were separate, but they both started uh, foraging in the ancient ocean in that ancient Tethy Sea. And cetaceans are from an ancestor that also evolved into hippos and even toed uh, herbivores like giraffes and deer, but their fossil record also goes back 50 million years, just like sirenians. So we're gonna focus on cetaceans and sound from now on. And of all the groups of marine mammals, it's the cetaceans that have the most sophisticated sound generating and processing adaptations. And that's what our next lesson is gonna focus on. So we're gonna move on and focus um, on sperm whales 
for our next lesson. Thank you for listening. And uh, think about playing some of the marine mammal sounds that you have in the sound folder. There's a whole bunch to choose from and draw what you imagine either in your mind's eye when you hear those sounds, what do you think they look like? Or even what do you think they are going to look like when we play them through a spectrogram? If you have an idea about what spectrograms look like. Uh, but just use your mind's eye and your imagination to kind of draw those sounds and help you focus in and listen. And you can choose um, any three or four uh, marine mammal sounds that you would like. And I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for listening.